Welcome, join me to Macedonia and to Corinth again. We're walking with Paul. Luke's account in Acts 20 passes very quickly over Paul's visit to Macedonia and Achaia, but certain additional details are supplied by his epistles. Very important to read those books. He went from Ephesus to Troas, Paul's first missionary tour, where his preaching was favorably received. This was not always the case. In Troas, the apostle expected to find Titus with a report of the reaction of the Corinthian church to his epistle, sent a short time before. Disappointed at not finding him there, he hurried to Macedonia. The believers at Corinth weighed heavily upon his heart. He was worried about the Corinthian church. They were exposed to a lot of wickedness. Furthermore, when he came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and the door was opened to me by the Lord, I had no rest in my spirit, because I did not find Titus, my brother, but taking my leave of them, I departed for Macedonia. And there he found Titus, and he had encouraging tidings from him, from Corinth. For indeed, when he came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Outside were conflicts, inside were fears. Nevertheless, God, who comforts the downcast, beautiful words, comforted us by the coming of Titus. Are you comforting people when you come to them? Please do it. Not only by his coming, but also by the consolation with which he was comforted in you. When he told us of your earnest desire, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoiced even more. Cheered greatly by this report, the apostle wrote two Corinthians, a letter, in which he promised to visit the Corinthians church and dispatched it evidently by Titus. Paul then went southward into Greece and visited the believers there. While at Corinth for about three months, he wrote the epistles to the Romans and the Galatians, about 58 AD. Beautiful books, please read it. Return via Macedonia. Paul now planned to take ship for Syria, but just about the time for embarkation, he learned of a plot by some Jewish enemies to kill him, probably while he was aboard ship. Consequently, he changed his plans and went by way of Macedonia, thus foiling the plot of his would-be murderers, and stayed three months. And when the Jews plotted against him, as he was about to sail to Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. He travelled northward, probably by way of Berea and Thessalonica, to Philip Philippi. While several other companions crossed over to Troas, Paul and Luke remained at Philippi for the Passover and then, after the days of unleavened bread, sailed to join the others. And Sopater of Berea accompanied him to Asia. Also Aristarchus and Secundus of the Thess Thessalonians and Gaius of Derby and Timothy and Ty Tychicus and Trophimus of Asia. These men going ahead waited for us at Troas. Of course, the book was written by Dr. Lucas. Luke. Troas and the voyage to Palestine. Paul spent a week at Troas. The evening before his departure, a farewell service was held. It was on the yeah, first day of the week. About midnight, a young man named Eutychus, who was sitting in an open window of the third-story room in which the meeting was being held, went to sleep. Have you ever slept in the church? Sometimes we're so tired that it happens. 
the service was disrupted, fell to the ground below, hastening down, Paul embraced him and stated that his life was in him, and the youth revived. He was dead, and God woke, woke, uh, uh, restored him to life. What a miracle! Can you imagine the joy of the people during that night, midnight meeting? I don't think anybody fell asleep after this. Now, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. And in the window sat a certain young man named Eutychus who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep, and as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third, third, from the third story and was taken up dead. But Paul went down, fell on him, and embracing him, said, Do not trouble yourselves, for his life is in him. And they brought the young man in alive. And they were not, and they were not a little comforted, but they were mega comforted. Now, when he had come up, had broken bread and eaten, and talked a long while, even till daybreak, he departed. Returning to the meeting room, the group celebrated the Lord's Supper, after which Paul conversed with them until dawn. Then he bade them farewell and departed for the 32 k's walk across the peninsula to Assos. So that Sunday he worked hard, working a long way to Assos. Having rejoined his companions in the ship, Paul sailed to Mytil, Mytilene, Chios, and Samos to Miletus, some 64 k's south of Ephesus. Then we went ahead to the ship and sailed to Hussles, there intending to take Paul on board, for so he had given orders, intending himself to go on foot. And when he met us at Hussles, we took him on board and came to Mytilene. We sailed from there and the next day came opposite Kios. The following day we arrived at Samos and stayed at Trochulium. The next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus so that he would not have to spend time in Asia, for he was hurrying to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. From Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. He had purposely passed Ephesus, for a stop there would unquestionably have made impossible his arrival at Jerusalem for Pentecost, which was but a short time away. He didn't want to miss a meeting. Kusadasi, ancient seaport of Ephesus. The record of this meeting, during which Paul warned the elders against heresy and exhorted them to faithfulness, is one of the most touching passages in the book of Acts. He sent word to the elders of Ephesus, of the Ephesian church to meet him at Miletus. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know, from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. How I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, now I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city saying that chains and tribulations await for me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count my love dear to myself, 
so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. What a man. And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. And I think he choked a bit there. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men. For I have not shown to declare you the whole counsel of God. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from, also from among yourselves men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone, night and day with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I've covered it, no one's silver or gold or apparel. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who were with me. I've shown you in every way, by labouring like this, that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Before departing, Paul prayed with his visitors, then bade them a tearful farewell and boarded ship to continue his voyage. And I think they waved one to another. It's sad to say goodbye for the last time. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. Then they all wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke, that they would see his face no more, and they accompanied him to the ship. Having at length arrived via Kos and Rhodos, at Patara, a city on the coast of Lycia, Paul and his companions boarded another ship and eventually reached Tyre, Acts 22, sailing to new destinations. Now it came to pass that when we had departed from them and set sail, running a straight course, we came to Kos. The following day to Rhodes and from there to Patara and finding a ship sailing over Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. When we had sighted Cyprus, we passed it on the left, sailed to Syria and landed at Tyre, for there the ship was to unload her cargo. There they found some believers and remained with them a week. What a gift. Friendship is such a great gift. During this time, Paul was prophetically warned of the danger of going to Jerusalem. When it was time for him to rejoin he shipped the entire group of believers accompanied him to the shore. Paul's ship stopped next at Utelemais, where he and those accompanying him spent one day with the brethren and then continued the journey, probably by foot, to Caesarea. Here they stayed at the home of Philip, the evangelist and deacon. And finding disciples, we stayed there seven days. They told Paul, through the Spirit, not to go up to Jerusalem. When we had come to the end of those days, we departed and went our way. And they all accompanied us with wives and children till we were out of the city. When we had taken our leave of one another, we boarded the ship and they returned home. 
And when we had finished our voyage from Tyre, we came to Potolemais, greeted the brethren, and stayed with them one day. On the next day, we who were Paul's companions departed and came to Caesarea and entered the house of Philip, the evangelist, who was one of the seven and stayed with him. At some time during the several days Paul stayed at Caesarea, a prophet, Achabus, predicted that evil results would follow Paul's visit to Jerusalem. Upon hearing this, both those accompanying the apostle and the church at Caesarea pressed him not to go, but he remained inflexible in his decision. Now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied, and as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Achabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now when we heard these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem, for the name of the Lord Jesus. So when he would not be persuaded, we ceased saying, The will of the Lord be done. Next time, Paul, the prisoner. I'm looking forward to meet him. And he wants to meet you as well. Father in heaven, we learned about a few tears that were shed when Paul had to say goodbye to those he brought into the faith, the converts. But thank you for a day that's coming when we'll never say goodbye. Help us to be faithful and energetic in telling people about your goodness and showing them kindness. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching this presentation. To subscribe to our channel, click here, then click the bell to get notifications. For the next presentation, click here. See you next time.